Enjoy all three services from the cable. The quality of your service is very excellent. The internet service is great. And I talk all day on my freedom call. The cable strips for pay. We pride ourselves on delivering quality. The best the internet service. We make it easy to stay in touch. The cable strips for pay. Take all three services from the cable and enjoy 10% off your cable bill. The cable. Original deputies signed to the newly created Orange County Sheriff's Office, Walt Disney World Tourism Control Unit. The experience gained at Walt Disney will be instrumental in developing the law enforcement strategies in the tourism based economy of this Oprah Federation. Commissioner Walt, Commissioner Walt Disney effort in making this community safe for all residents and visitors alike did not just begin in the Federation. He was recognized for his efforts as Officer of the Month in 2010, 2009, 2008, 2007, 2006, 2005, 2003, and Officer of the Year in 2010, then he had a hat trick 2005, 2007, and again in 1990. Uh, and presently, the 2010-2011 officer of the year will come to the service. I recall vividly Mr. Goldwyn Haynes in 1973 told me at a public safety juvenile convocation in the U.S. Virgin Islands that St. has had two main exports. One was sugar cane, the other was children. Brains. Mr. Kane was not wrong in his assessment. Today, we no longer have sugar cane, but we still have children with brains. Unfortunately for some of us, some of our children are not using the full capacity of their brains. We might be a small nation, thank you, Mr. Davis. But we have collectively over the years exported some very talented children across the world. Today, we have descendants of these children making or having made an impact in most every city across the world. Alexander Hamilton is the first name that many of us think about when it comes to sons, of, sons and daughters of the soil who have made an impact in their society and embraced their heritage and ethical values away from home. But there are others who, just like you and me, began with very humble beginnings. And I can think of two right now. Elena Leone Elizabeth Davis. Born 5 June 1900 in Bastia, St. Kitts, to Robert and Alice Maud Rebecca Angus Davis, moved to St. Croix with her parents at a young age. And it seems like the trick is to move to St. Croix at a young age. <laughs> so did Alexander Hamilton, by the way. Moved to St. Croix at a young age. Elena would later marry Adam Christian, a native of St. Croix. Elena Christian contributed immensely to the education of the people of St. Croix. The Elena Christian Junior High School in Christiansted is named in her honor, even though she was not born in St. Croix. And it was done while she was alive at the sea. Elena Christian's son, a descendant of a native of this soil, was the first district court judge of the U.S. Virgin Islands. His name is Judge Mary Christian. And Elena's granddaughter, who was born in St. Croix, and Elena being a native of this soil, her granddaughter is the U.S. Congresswoman of the Virgin Islands. They have all followed in the footsteps of exercising tolerance, compassion, and self-respect. 
Another example of children of citizens of the Federation being born abroad, but holding on to the values they were taught by their parents from the Federation, is Constance Baker Motley, the daughter of Willoughby Baker and the Vision. Like an inner Christian, Willoughby instilled in his daughter the values he learned in the Federation as a child. Willoughby's daughter Constance would grow up to serve citizens in America who would deny a basic right in the United States, which is the right to an education. The virtues instilled in Constance by her father had led her to fight for all people and the passage of legislation in the United States, known to all of us who have went to school in the United States, as Brown versus the Board of Education. Constance would go on to the U.S. Supreme Court ten times, and she would win her cases nine out of the ten times on behalf of equal rights for citizens who were disadvantaged in the United States. And as I speak right now, I'd like to acknowledge in the fact relatives of Constance Baker Moe Bartley, myself, and the Walden sitting back there. Constance was born to become the first black federal female judge in the United States of America appointed by President Johnson. Her father was from Nevis. She was born to become a member of Columbia Law School. She was the first black woman accepted into that law school. She was born to become the first black woman to be elected to the New York Senate. She would go on to become the first woman and the first black woman to hold the position of Manhattan Borough President in New York. This is a woman who was instilled with the values children by her parents from the Federation. I can go on with many stories like this. People like you and me who have made a difference because of the teachings that they received here in the Federation. It was John Didion who said that the willingness to accept responsibility in one's own life is the source from which self-respect springs. I wish for people who are your people, those in here and those out there raise your land who find themselves in various stages of decision-making, please, do the right thing and respect yourselves. You have an obligation to set the standard for responsible living. It is said that self-respect is the cornerstone of all virtue. With it comes self-discipline, self-control, the ability to set values long goals as, as an individual and would reach out and you would affect the change of behavior and that lifestyle because we know the benefits that such a change will engender. We are willing to do this as part of our efforts to preserve the heritage from which the nation and thank its leaders is known. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are cognizant of the fact the society in now which we live has changed exponentially. Our neighbors, our friends, our colleagues, to look around the room, they differ from those we knew two decades ago. We are developing and have made significant advancement. We are developing and we are leaping and jumping and we are skipping and leaping in leaps and bounds. And all the skipping and jumping and leaping have made us a proud nation. As a major tourist attraction, we must be willing to encourage visitors. We must be ready and welcome, be ready and willing to welcome 
honest investments. They will differ from us in many ways, but we will tolerate and show them significance of the core values that have distinguished us as a people and as a country. In closing, let me emphasize that each citizen must be held accountable for his or her own choices. However, the proper upbringing, building morals, values, and boundaries will help to ensure that an individual will make the right choice when called upon to make a decision. I appeal to our young people who are listening tonight, those of you here too, but especially to the ones that are listening and they know who they are. I appeal to you and I emphasize repeatedly that there are better options for you. Self-respect, tolerance, and compassion will in no way lead you into a life of crime. In fact, these are the symbols of maturity and strong prerequisites for survival and at no cost to every man, boy, or girl in this country, if you do the right thing, you can make a difference in your community. I therefore recommend that we begin from today in our homes, in our schools, our workplaces, in our communities, and our country as a whole, to commit ourselves to preserving our rich culture, our proud heritage, teach our boys and girls, our young people, to respect themselves and others, show them how to be tolerant and compassionate by living out these virtues in our daily lives. Let us carry the torch of heritage like the great Olympians to the next generation. Beginning now, this very evening, let us keep the flame aglow with these virtues that we know, and we'll steer them from a life of dogma by lack of self-respect, intolerance, lack of compassion, all of which have the capacity to engender violence. And while we speak about violence, I want to say this as I close. Violence has no place in our society. I am not now, nor ever will be, tolerant of the actions of the criminal element in our Federation. I want them to know that while we are willing to help them and have been dialoguing with them for the last two weeks, the wrath of the law will fall on them if they are linked to the perpetration of any violent crime in this Federation. We are still holding out the olive branch to those of you who are willing to leave the gangs. Some of you have made contact with me this week, and some of you have sent messages to me. I want to help you leave the gangs, but I cannot be tolerant of your actions. I have received your messages. And I appreciate what you have been doing these last couple of weeks. However, let me be very clear. I do not want any more, any more mother's crying. Please help me keep it that way. Do the right thing. Stop the killing. You understand what I'm saying to you. And I know you understand it. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you and God bless the Federation.